Upon reaching Chapter 8 in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the party will arrive at the Gold Saucer and you'll play a variety of minigames to earn weapons, accessories, materials, and Gold Saucer points that can be exchanged for even more items. There are many valuable minigame prizes you don't want to pass up, and we've got you covered. Here are top tips for how to get the best rewards in every Gold Saucer minigame. The Gold Saucer is home to six minigames with one in each square of the amusement park. There are also two more minigames to earn prizes in the Dust Bowl area beneath the saucer. Keep in mind you will need to come back to the saucer in Chapter 12 to play the more difficult versions of the minigames and earn all the possible rewards. There is also a side quest involving the Shinra middle manager NPC, so you can save some time by waiting to take on that side quest to accomplish it and the new challenges at the same time. Let's get started. The first minigame you will play when you arrive at the Gold Saucer is 3D Brawler in an exhibition match against the man in charge of the Gold Saucer, Dio. 3D Brawler is an updated version of the 3D Battler fighting minigame from the original and is one of two places you can get the all-important ribbon accessory to block all status effects except for stun. 3D Brawler will have three matches available in Chapter 8 and another three matches in Chapter 12. Each match features a star rating from 1 to 5 and requires you to beat each of them in order to unlock the next. Chapter 8 will pit you against a Saucer Brawler, 1 star, Fat Moogle, 2 star, and Dio, 3 star. Then Chapter 12 adds Shiva, 4 star, Ifrit, 5 star, and a final opponent, 5 star with a gold outline. As the matches progress, so will the number of punches the opponent can throw at you. Saucer Brawler will only throw left hooks and right hooks, but once you reach the final opponent, he will throw straights, hooks, and uppercuts from both hands. The trick to this minigame is learning the animation for each punch, which changes based on the opponent. But generally, straights come out fastest, and uppercuts come out the slowest from all opponents. Once you reach Dio, opponents will also periodically enter a state of rage and throw out a flurry of punches in rapid succession. These have faster animations, making it tougher to read the punches. These fights could get incredibly tough, but as of launch, there is one trick that everyone can use to make the minigame much easier. The pause button. At any time during the minigame, you can pause the game to give yourself more time to read the opponent's punch and prepare to dodge with the correct input. The trickiest part of this is timing your pause to the proper point of animation. Do it too early, and you may not be able to tell yet. Do it too late, and by the time you unpause, you may not be able to input your dodge command fast enough. This trick was enough for us not only to win fights with ease, but also learn the animations of the opponents so we didn't need it as much as the fight went on. So our advice is to use the pause button until you can memorize and identify the type of punch thrown with ease. The G-Bike minigame makes its return from the original Gold Saucer and offers valuable rewards like Astral Remnant, Dark Matter, and the Limit Booster accessory. You'll need to reach rank 3 to earn all three rewards, but these can be easily done with just a few simple tips. There's no time limit or time bonus for G-Bike, so the only time you need to accelerate to max speed is when it's beneficial to do so, such as closing the gap on a large group of enemies to use your spinning slash attack, or to gain enough speed to launch up the side of the walls to gather nitro or G-point panels on the course. For the standard course in Chapter 8, you only need a score of 30k to earn all the rewards. Though these aren't as valuable as the expert course, the gold saucer points will come in handy for purchasing rewards from the shops at the gold saucer. You will get most of your points from defeating enemies as you progress, however, you will also need to grab the G-point panels on the course to help push you over the 30k requirement. As you race, lightly hold the accelerate button and use the brake button to slow down as necessary when you approach any of the groups of teal G-Bike fuel tokens on the course. This is important because they are each worth 50 points and usually add around 5k or more to our scores at the end of the race. Keep an eye on your fuel gauge in the bottom right corner of the screen as it constantly ticks down and drops further when damaged by enemy bullets or explosives. The good news is collecting those G-Point panels will replenish that for you, and usually grabbing a full group of them was enough to fully replenish our health throughout the minigame. 
Once you reach the expert course in Chapter 12, you will need 31k for Rank 3 rewards, but the added difficulty here is that enemies are more aggressive with their explosives, and there is an indestructible helicopter added that will also regularly throw explosives on the course too. The good news is the plan is the same. Keep acceleration to a minimum, take out enemies, and prioritize grabbing the G-point panels whenever possible. Doing this should easily net you the 31k needed for the Astral Remnant, Dark Matter, and Limit Booster rewards. There are 22 Chocobo races in total. The first 10 are available in Chapter 8, with the remaining 12 available in Chapter 12. Clearing them all will reward you with useful accessories or materials to upgrade other accessories. So here are 7 tips for leaving the competition in your Choco Dust. Buy all the Chocobo gear you can. It's worthwhile to save golden plumes earned from fixing Choco Stops and wrangling Chocobos to purchase later gear sets with different abilities, but you will want to have options for your races during the story events the first time you reach the Gold Saucer. Pick the right Chocobo for the job. Different Chocobos offer different special abilities. Pico, the yellow Chocobo, comes with a speed boost ability that grants invincibility when maintaining top speed long enough, while the green Chocobo Fango and its Choco Jump ability allows you to ignore hazards, jump over corners, create shortcuts, and even extend your flight time after hitting an updraft panel. Pay attention to the course location and its description. If the course has a lot of straightaways, pick the Chocobo and gear that gives you the best top speed and acceleration. If it has a lot of hazards or hairpin turns, you will want to pick gear that gives boost to cornering or recovery from hazards. Focus on blue balloons early on in the race. This will help you reach your maximum top speed quickly. Then, focus on red to activate your ability, and finally yellow for their consumable dash charges when you need them most. Avoid other racers when possible, as each collision will not only bounce you around the track if your weight is lower than the other chocobo, but it will also reduce your collection of blue balloons and reduce your maximum speed. Keep a dash charge or other boost ability in reserve for hazards like cactuar doors or bombs. Cactuar doors will automatically open and close, and getting caught on one will often stop or slow you down for multiple seconds and reduce your maximum speed counter. Utilize the updrafts when possible. These usually will allow you to fly over sections of the course, and you can use them to skip portions of the track. Just be careful not to skip too much, or you may get hit with an out-of-bounds penalty and be stopped by Moogles while they place you back on the track. Clearing all the Chocobo races will offer valuable rewards like the Hermes Shoes or Choco King's Cape accessories to give you haste or ATB gauge at the start of battle. Other rewards include new Chocobo gear and materials like Dark Matter, which you will need to upgrade some of the late game accessories. Galactic Saviors is a Star Fox styled minigame where you must shoot down enemy ships for points. Unlike the G-Bike minigame, you earn bonuses based on your performance for any leftover health charges, as well as a time bonus for how quickly you finish the level. Achieving the top rank score for these minigames will earn you more Dark Matter, as well as the Space Ranger Metal accessories, which boost both physical and magical strength. The minigame is pretty similar on both difficulties. The biggest changes are increased enemy presence on Expert, and the automatic triggering of health items when you run out of health only happens on Standard. The best way to earn more points in Galactic Saviors is to make sure you clear each enemy in a wave to get a squad kill bonus. These can be worth thousands of points, so it's worth spending an extra bar of energy for a proton bomb if it means killing the final unit before it flies off screen. You also earn point bonuses for each well-timed barrel roll used to dodge incoming shots, but keep in mind that the barrel roll and proton bombs share the same resource meter. The other big point bonus comes from your end-of-game bonuses and will reward you for extra time on the clock and remaining resources such as health packs. Queen's Blood will have a number of opponents to face as well as some puzzle challenges where you are given a set hand and must play cards in a specific order or location in order to turn the tides and win. If you've been playing the available matches up to this point, your deck should be capable of handling any of the standard opponents at the Gold Saucer. The survival challenges, on the other hand, may require you to tweak your deck a bit to earn the top rewards. Survival challenges require you to play multiple boards without reshuffling previously played cards back into your deck. 
When taking on survival challenges, you will want to stack your deck with any cards you've acquired that have the ability to spawn additional cards, like Mandragora and Mogul Trio. If you find yourself lacking cards with this ability, or are having a hard time completing the challenge, you can wait until you return in Chapter 12 after you've gained access to more cards like Brangolin, Kate Sith, and more. Each round typically has some sort of bonus mechanic to help as well, so it's important to take note of each one's mechanic. Chess will reward the winner of each lane with bonus cards, giving you more options in the following rounds. Shiva will spawn blocks of ice with random power in any open slots. Our final tip for Queen's Blood survival matches is to save cards in your hand if you don't need to play them to win a lane in the current round, as all cards in your hand carry over to the next round. Claiming victory in these matches will net you a good amount of gold saucer points and also unlock powerful cards that will be useful in future matches of Queen's Blood. Wackabox makes a return from Final Fantasy VII Remake under the name Desert Rush. You still need to destroy all the boxes within the time limit, though this game adds new gear boxes with small green or red lightning symbols on them that require destroying the larger shock boxes with large lightning symbols on them first. There are also new hit-activated elevators to move between the different floors of the stage. Clearing the standard difficulty with the Rank 3 reward will earn you the Dragon Claw's weapon for Tifa, while earning the Rank 3 rewards on Challenging will net you more Dark Matter and the Box Crusher Keychain accessory. There are three techniques you want to utilize to maximize your damage and reduce the time it takes to clear each set of boxes. First, make sure you have the Triple Slash special ability for Cloud. This will cut through any of the larger boxes in two slashes. Next, you're going to want to be familiar with the Operator Mode Hold Square Sweeping Slash attack in its range, as it's the best way to clear out a large grouping of smaller boxes. One note to keep in mind is to not use this attack too close to gear boxes that are ready to be destroyed, because they will cause Cloud to stagger backwards, costing you seconds of time. The final technique you want to be familiar with is the ranged attack Cloud can throw out by using an attack immediately after dodging. This will come in handy for out-of-reach boxes. Desert Rush all comes down to finding the most optimal path to each of the shock boxes through each challenge, saving enough ATV gauge to triple slash the more durable 1500 point boxes, and utilizing the right attacks to destroy the right boxes. To clear the standard course with the highest rank, you will need to earn 42k of the 45k potential points. As soon as the round starts, head to your right and destroy both the time bonus box and shock box, then follow up with a sweeping slash to clear the small boxes that appear after it's destroyed. Head back down the ramp from the start of the minigame and triple slash the three 1500 point boxes to the right, then head back and clear the gear box to progress forward. Head up the ramp, destroy the time box on your left, then proceed down the ramp to the next shock box. Destroy it and the accompanying boxes, then follow the path to destroy more, making sure not to miss the 1500 box on your left. Finish following the path, then after the next gearbox, destroy the two time boxes on your left using Cloud's ranged attacks. Head back to the area with the gearboxes that you can now destroy, and attack the elevators to head to the next floor. After hopping off the elevator, continue straight forward and triple slash the two 1500 boxes, then destroy the shock box in the corner. Afterward, turn around and head towards the large group of boxes. Make sure you destroy the boxes tucked away in the little alcoves on the left wall. Continue up the ramp, destroy the 1500 box on the right along with the time box sitting on top of it. Then, destroy the three shock boxes to access the next elevator. After reaching the top, head down the narrow passageway destroying all the boxes in your path, along with the large time box at the end. Head back and destroy the boxes now on your left, and continue down the ramp to another elevator. Huh? <laughs> 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 
Write it down to destroy the final shock box, then take the blue elevator closest to where you started the minigame. Destroy all the boxes in this area, then make your way back up the red elevators, making sure to destroy the now destructible gear boxes on the way. Continue back to the highest level. You should have a score of 37.5k before destroying the three gearboxes blocking the last red elevator. Once you reach the top, break through the gearboxes making sure to save at least one section of ATV gauge to triple slash the 1500 boxes at the very end of the path. If you destroyed all the boxes, you should reach the 45k score and earn all the rewards from Desert Rush. The challenging course will require a score of 55k out of the potential 60k to earn all the rewards. Immediately after starting the round, turn around and destroy the large time box behind you. Then continue down the ramp on your right with all the gearboxes. Continue around them and up the ramp to destroy a group of small boxes in the first shock box. After heading back down the ramp towards the start point, clear the single gearbox, then triple slash the middle of the three 1500 boxes in front of you. <laughs> Destroy the three large time boxes in the alcove to the right before continuing up the ramp to the next area. Use Sweeping Slash to clear through this room's small boxes until you reach the end of the path on the right with the next shock box. <laughs> After destroying that, continue down the nearby ramp following the path destroying boxes along the way, taking care to avoid the exposed electrical wires on the ground. After finishing the path, take the red elevator up to the next level. Follow the path on the next level until you reach a set of three destructible gearboxes blocking the next shock box and three more large time boxes to destroy. Head back the way you came while making a quick stop to triple slash the 1500 block on the left with a time box in front of it. Next, clear the floor of the remaining gearboxes using either sweeping or triple slash making sure to get the two large time boxes hidden in one of the alcoves. Ride the elevator located to the left of where you destroyed the third shock box up to the next floor. As soon as you get off the elevator, Head to the right and triple slash the three 1500 boxes and then destroy the fourth shock box behind them. Head back the way you came and use a sweeping slash on the group of boxes to the left to destroy them all along with a few time boxes on the level above you. <laughs> so long. Following that, go down the line destroying all the boxes until you reach a pair of time boxes. Then, reverse course and take the elevator up to the next floor. <laughs> Triple slash the stack of boxes in front of you once you reach the next floor. Then, head across the bridge using a ranged attack to destroy the large time box on the right. <laughs> Make your way through the next section using Sweeping Slash for the gear boxes and Triple Slash for the 1500 box while avoiding the exposed electrical wires on the ground. Head to the next red elevator and ride it to the highest floor, Triple Slash the 1500 box behind the elevator, then continue to the blue elevator to ride it down a floor. <laughs> From the elevator, head to the right and destroy the shock box ahead of you. 
turn around and head down the narrow path, avoiding the electrical wires to destroy a 1500 point box and reach the next elevator. <laughs> Ride it down to yet another blue elevator and use a sweeping attack on it to destroy another large time box on your way down to the starting floor. At this point, you should have 48k points and can head towards the starting area to destroy a set of four gearboxes. Then, reverse course to a small hallway filled with 1500 point and 500 point gearboxes. Use sweeping slash for gearboxes and triple slash for any 1500 boxes down the path all the way to the final red elevator. Ride the elevator up and triple slash the last set of boxes which should give you the full 60k points possible and earn you the remaining rewards from Desert Rush. Musclehead Coliseum in Battle Square and Beast Battleground in the Dust Bowl operate just like Chadley's Battle Simulator. You will want to make sure your party is around the level of the combat challenge to give yourself the best chance. Though with the right party and materia combinations, you can tackle challenges above your level. Here are the materia you want to make sure you have and at least somewhat leveled up to make these challenges easier. Level 2 Elemental Materia these will come in handy as they will nullify the elemental damage from the paired materia. We paired them with the fire and ice combo materia and the lightning and wind combo materia to give each character immunity to two of the elements. This comes in handy in fights against bombs that unleash high amounts of fire damage. Just make sure to slot them in your armor and not your weapons. Magnify materia is useful so you can either heal or buff your entire party with one section of ATB gauge. You can also use this with elemental materia to damage everyone at once if you choose to go that route. Revival materia. If a party member goes down, a convenient way to raise them is with this materia, or by using Phoenix down. Unless you have revival earrings equipped for their single use effect, or have obtained a Phoenix summon. Level 2 cleansing materia will grant you access to Asuna, so you can remove any debuffs on your party like Toad or Petrification. Chakra Materia gives excellent value not only for its large heal when you are low on health, but also for its removal of poison. This is a great option if you start to run low on MP, or if you want to save your MP for offensive abilities. Level 2 or 3 Precision Defense Focus Materia will not only make parrying enemies easier, but will increase their stagger at level 2, and at level 3 will allow you to parry binding attacks like Throat Clamp from Wolf Enemy Type. Warding Materia. We paired Warding Materia with either the Petrify or Poison and Petrify Materia, depending on what we had available at the time, to prevent being petrified during encounters. Later on, when you have accessories like ribbons and safety bits, you can replace this with a Steadfast Block Materia to reduce your damage on guarding and give you a large ATB boost to synergize with your Precision Defense Focus Materia. Keep in mind some challenges at both arenas won't be available until Chapter 12, and then another selection of them with even better rewards won't be available until you finish the main campaign and return via Chapter Select. And that's our best tips for taking down all the challenges you will come across at the Gold Saucer. For more tips and tricks on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, check out our wiki guide on IGN.com. And for all the info on how to increase your relationship levels for that Gold Saucer date, watch our Romance Guide video. For everything else video games, stick with IGN.